Hey guys, it's Jill and today I am heading my happy self out to the barn. I decided to film a barn vlog today since they are always super, super requested. And it's a pretty day and I already have makeup on. So like, you know, trying to impress you guys. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go into the barn, probably just flat Mrs. Bubbles. She has been going absolutely wonderfully lately. There's a chicken in my neighbor's yard. I did not know that they had chickens. It's an interesting development. Mm. So in the month or so that I've been working with Bubbles, I've learned a lot about like what is working best to help her understand. We've jumped her twice, about an appropriate height for a three-year-old. We definitely have not overfaced her at all. She's taking everything like a champ. Not interested in getting in the young horse debate with anybody. <laughs> um, everyone has their own opinions and they are entitled to it. I have a team of my vet, trainer, chiropractor, and Bubbles' owner are all on board with everything that we're doing. So we do have the horse's best interests at heart and and um, if you have something negative to say or uh, some couch coaching, I'm really not interested in hearing it. <laughs> um, how to be passive aggressive. I really think that we are doing a good job with Bubbles. I'm so excited. Um, to see where she goes um because the plan as of right now is to have her with us at Bray's for the winter and then do her first show at beginner novice when she's a four-year-old in the spring that'll probably be the case unless somebody buys her welcome to find her owner on facebook her name is sunny shepherd and you can talk to her about her um but she would really rather her get some training under her belt first um so that she has a really good positive start and has been to her first horse trial and all that sort of thing kind of wants that to get done first we are located in arkansas as well so just like know that um so aside all of the freaking rules that I have just laid out for this video I just I kind of hate that I feel like I have to do it you know like that's that's what's frustrating to me so many people are so confident in their opinions that they feel the need to like impose it on me without regard for like that I might actually like have looked into what I'm doing and like maybe have some reason behind it and maybe not just be acting to be wrong you know <laughs> um I'm gonna head out to the barn and do a flat ride on bubbles and I hope that you guys enjoy this video um, a lot of people have been asking me questions geared towards like young horses and how to start them and I might do a series on it sort of walk you guys through what I'm doing to work with this young horse and help bring her along properly and confidently to the best of my ability I mean I'm only 19 I'm not a trainer I can only go off of my personal experiences and personal research so also when I do this with my hand the HDR is making me turn blue I thought I had blue nails for a second and I don't they're definitely gross okay ADD Jill is done let's go to the bar <laughs> I don't know why I have all these mares that ignore me. Bubs! Your mom said you come and she lied. Do not. You stay right where you are and stare at me like a mare. <laughs> Some of you may have noticed that Bubbles and Zoe are not in the same pasture and that is because Zoe is a bully and she's been beating Bubbles up. <laughs> so Bubbles goes out here now. They just um, rotate out which horses get to go out here. They're putting in another pasture since we have so many ponies. Hello! Look at her! Stop walking the wrong direction. Don't do that to me. Hi, Beeves. Hello. I see you leaning away. Don't do that. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. Hi, baby. Oh, she's pretty. She's pretty. Hello. Wow, so photogenic. Good, Giannia. Good, Joey Graceffa. Hold on, now I have to take pictures. I have her captured. Come on! Cheer up! Come on! Yay! She's so cute! She says we're almost there. Why would we run? <laughs> She's so pretty. So pretty. Staring at two different views on your window ledge Coffee is gone cold, it's like time froze There you go, wishing, floating down your wishing well It's like I'm always causing problems, causing hell I didn't mean to put you through this, I can tell we can sweep this under the carpet, yeah I hope that I can turn back the time to make it all right All right for us I promise to build 
So some things I want to talk about because I've gotten comments on them and um, there are some misconceptions. So this bit is a boucher, voucher, voucher. There are many ways to pronounce it and many um, <laughs> opinions on how to pronounce it. I say boucher because I believe that is the French word for mouth if you leave off the R. Um, <laughs> it's just weird. So we do have her in this bit because you can see the action if I can get her to stand still. When I pull on the rein, there is a little bit of a tip here and it adds a little pull pressure up here. Obviously I'm not hauling back on it and like forcing her head down. It, she, it, she's much stronger than me and this bit, that would not work. <laughs> um, so I do just like that little bit of a pressure helps encourage um, what we're going for, which is obviously softness over the top line. And um, <laughs> she says that so boring. <laughs> and some engagement of the hind end. Obviously she's three and a baby and um, we're not trying to overface her, just trying to help her sort of understand the goal and she wasn't really quite getting it in a regular snaffle so we just put the simple boucher on it's like it's a happy mouth double jointed with a roller in the middle it's a super soft bit and it's a piece of right here <laughs> and um, so she really seems to like it and she softens into it and connects to it and which you guys will hopefully see a little bit of I have a running martingale on her as you can see it's a bit long because it's Zoe's breast collar portion is also a bit long um, because it's Zoe's and Bubbles is a teeny tiny little bean. She's like 15 too, I think we decided. As you can see, the running martingale is not currently in effect. If I tighten my rein, the running martingale is still not in effect. It's only when her head goes up and I have a connected rein that the running martingale um, affects the downward pressure onto her mouth. Um, and the reason that we have that is to keep both horse and rider safe because when the horse's head is way up here they're not really paying attention to what's in front of them and um, it can get dangerous for jumping and stuff so again it's just to encourage her to like relax and soften so both with the boucher and the running martingale when she softens into that position they both relax and they're not putting a whole lot of pressure on her to begin with anyway because we just want to encourage we don't want to force what do you she said i love to play with the bit <laughs> it's fun so yeah and i do have her in my dressage saddle and that's sort of just what we're working with today but i just wanted to clear some things up with that because i've had several people tell me that i'm abusive for using earning rank gallon i'm like clearly you have no idea what that piece of equipment does also my charles owen thing is green i need me like what are those things called? Brillo pad? <laughs> like scrub all the mold off of it. It's gross. I need to polish it. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna get on the beebs and then we're gonna get to rocking and rolling and I will talk in my ride and tell you guys sort of what I'm doing, what I'm working on. This sweet little bean! Obviously, again, we're not trying to overface her or ask too much of her because she is still so young. We're just like kind of getting there like starting to introduce some ideas of like collection roundness um properly using herself that sort of thing so don't attack me with abuse and like i don't know how to ride and all those sorts of things that people like to jump to immediately this is a very young horse she is straight off the track i've only had her for a month i don't know her that well she doesn't know me that well she doesn't speak my language i don't speak hers i'm learning it <laughs> um but yeah so everything's not going to be pristine and pretty so just give her a pass she's a little baby horse and i'm young myself so i i love being <laughs> okay i'm gonna get on Whoop. Hello everyone! VoiceOver Jill is back in better than ever. I'm very tired after a long weekend at the horse show, but now I'm back to film a video for you. Um, I filmed this a few days ago of me riding little beeps. Um, so I'm just going to walk you guys through what I'm doing. Um, you can see there I'm kind of asking her to think about um, like just dropping her headset a little bit because she likes to be a giraffe. <laughs> and um, uh, doing that, I move her around off my leg and get her thinking about sort of lifting her barrel um, with my inside leg and using big open reins and asking her to connect to my outside rein. Um, and all of this is very obvious and um, much more um, drastic than I would do on a, a really well-trained horse um, where your aids can be a little more refined. You have to be very quiet, soft, and clear with young horses. And um, we take lots of walk breaks <laughs> because little bubs um, obviously does not have the fitness level um, as maybe Zoe would have or a horse that's like a going competition horse. Because um, Bubbles did have a really long letdown period 
And um, you can see there, I'm just following with my arms, keeping the tempo with her head and neck so that she can really think about reaching over her back and then bending around my leg is the biggest thing that I'm working on her, uh, working with her on right now. You can see there, I'm turning to the right. Big open reins to be really, really clear, but I have to be careful with that to support her with my inside leg so that she doesn't just fall in. And sometimes that means using a really big open outside rein. Um, as you'll find with a lot of horses in general, young or not, um, they normally pick a spot in the circle to either fall in or fall out. And you have to be aware of that and adjust your aids, um, your leg and your hand accordingly. So this right here that you're witnessing is um, a spiral and uh, it's not as clean <laughs> as it would be with um, like a going horse, obviously. Um, and then uh, so I'm just working on that with Bubbles to get her thinking about balancing on her own a little bit and um, really listening to my cues as we get into a tighter circle because that is really difficult for a young horse to engage the hind end and the abs and um, think about dropping the headset and using the hind end. So you can see I spiral in from like a 30 to 50 meter circle to a 20 and to a 10 and we're not quite at the point where we can do a 5 just yet because she says I would much rather walk than um, keep trotting because that is hard. <laughs> so you'll see her think about her headset there a little bit and she's like wait how do I balance? <laughs> and then um, I pick the spot where she um, likes to fall in to start pushing her back out. Um, just to help to correct that behavior a little bit. And then we go back out on the bigger circle. Good. And you'll see here I ask her to walk with just my leg and upper body and try to stay out of her mouth. Um, just so that she learns a little bit to, that like obviously I don't want her to think that just hauling back on her face means whoa. That she can listen to the half halts and um, it's sort of just like innate nature. They They automatically understand and if they don't, you're probably not doing it right and that's something that I've really really had to learn working with young horses. Also another tip is to be very vocal, good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. If I had a dime for every time I've said that I would be a millionaire. Um, and uh, using voice commands is very helpful. Um, I know some people don't like to do it because at shows people will say it but your horse generally listens to you. Um, if somebody says trot and you say ho, the horse will be like, oh my, my mom said ho. <laughs> Um, so here you can see my big open rein to the left there because she likes to fall in at that particular part of the circle and here is where she likes to fall out <laughs> as I move her back out onto the circle um, and then I asked for a little bit of a canter. I was actually very proud of that transition. It wasn't running or speedy into it and uh, I don't canter her for long because again she doesn't have the um, proper strength in her top line and um, haunches to be able to canter properly and I would rather have like a few good circles rather than a bunch of really bad ones because I want to develop the proper musculature if that makes sense. Um, it's sort of like exercising like a person. <laughs> then I have to be very careful to follow from my elbows forward and back um, and I kind of do that with my upper body a bit more than I'd like. Um, she fell out of the trot there which is fine. Um, just bring her back down. Bubbles is very easy <laughs> to keep at a consistent trot, which is really nice. Some young horses, um, they'll speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. She does it a bit, but for the most part, she's pretty regular. So um, with a young horse that does that, you just have to be careful to um, regulate your own posting rhythm, and they'll adjust to you. And you can see I pick up the canter there, um, a big open rein to the left. Um, and uh, I'm just sort of asking her with my inside leg to lift up that center of balance um, and engage her hind end and hold the outside rein a bit more. But it's very important that you follow from your elbow to the bit because um, you want the horse to be able to use his head and neck naturally. You can see my open rein to the left there. It's very important to keep the shoulders straight on young horses and as they get older you can start like being a little less obvious and you can just do it like a few inches away from the withers and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's little beeves. Let's change direction. So after I've just cantered one way I like to take a little walk or um, trot break just to let her catch her breath a little bit and um, then you can see her start thinking about the the shape over the top line a little bit. She'll duck her head and then come back up and I just like to 
um, really encourage that, and I tell her good girl every time she does it. And um, this canter transition was a little more runny than I would like, but she was still very calm and relaxed, and she didn't panic once she hit the canter, which was really, really huge for her because she was kind of like, wah, about it. <laughs> and now she's sort of settling into herself and learning where her feet are a little bit. And um, to the left is her better way, obviously, little baby racehorse. Um, and you can see how quiet she is, and she's really thinking about that top line. Um, and I almost just wish I would give with my hand just a little bit more. My elbows are kind of going out to the side, which means I'm having a bit of a hard time following back and forth. <laughs> um, her canter's a little rocky when she puts her head up, but she wouldn't put her head up if I would give my hands forward. So, like, you guys, I'm still learning, too. I'm obviously not a trainer by any definition of the word. Um, so, like, I'm still learning and working through my own personal technique and skill developments. <laughs> How to speak in staccato. That was a better transition. I actually did ask for that one. And, um... She said, oh, I'd be happy to come right back to you. And slower, please, God. <laughs> Common misconception about thoroughbreds. They're not all crazy wired hyper animals. Um, like ones like Bubbles, and I've met a few that would just much rather walk and hang out <laughs> on a trail ride than um, BS to work. But for fitness <laughs> purposes, you got to do a little work. And so you can see her sort of stretching her neck down and searching for that contact a little bit. Um, and that's really huge for her. She's starting to trust me a little bit and trust her own balance um, and being able to put her head down a little bit, which is great because stretching over the top line is so important. You never want to ride your horse in a frame all the time because they do need to stretch over that top of that back because they can build up all sorts of soreness and it feels great. <laughs> and uh, it can really help strengthen them and work on their balance when their head is um, in that lower frame. Obviously, you don't want them behind the vertical or anything, just um, stretching down, seeking that contact, and balancing over their top line, engaging their, their own core, and <laughs> lifting up from their haunches. It's pretty, pretty cool to watch it happen with a young bean. And you'll see here again, I close my leg and sit up tall and kind of give with my hands forward because um, I am not... I mean, obviously, I do incorporate my hand a smidge, but I would really much rather her learn to half halt and whoa walk off of my body. And she does. She does it great. Honestly, though, with this mare, any excuse to walk, she is all about. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap this little episode up with some OTTB fun facts. Um, number one, OTTB stands for off the track thoroughbred. It is not a breed. Thoroughbred is a breed. Off the track just means that they have raced. Um, or have been trained to race. Um, they're usually, well, they will be tattooed um, and registered with the jockey club. They can't enter a track without that. Um, they are not all wired and crazy like everyone thinks. Just because they go fast on a track does not mean that they have that mentality all the time. Um, horses like Bubbles um, are actually very chill and relaxed and very desensitized. You can do almost anything around these horses because there are Vans, ambulances, horse trailers, horses, people, flags, screaming children, food flying everywhere at the track. Like, they're very desensitized. And um, I really, to this day, haven't met um, a really, really terribly spooky one. Um, obviously, they spook like regular prey animals, but I have yet to meet one that is, like, panicky all the time. I know they're out there, but um, they're an anomaly for me, at least. Um and, like, they do all come in different shapes and sizes. Bubbles is a smaller one. Zoe is huge. And, um, yeah, I mean, they're just all individuals. And it's it's really unfortunate and unfair to see the way that people tend to group them as these crazy wild animals that are all the same and they're just not. They can definitely be a little more hot-blooded than your average warm blood or quarter horse. But um, they are so special so dedicated they have so much heart and are so willing to please and to search for their new careers it's it's great to work with them and if I could do it for the rest of my life I certainly would slash will so um, I'm gonna let outro Jill do her thing and I hope that this was educational and um, not incorrect <laughs> um, as I am still learning again not a trainer 
I can only offer you the advice that I have learned over the years. So, um, yeah, I hope this was helpful in some way, shape, or form. If you guys have comments, I will try to answer as many as I can in the comments down below. So, yeah, back to you. Outro, Jill. Real quickly, forgot to talk about some other thing. Her nose band, very loose. However, me and my trainer decided that it was best to start her out in one. She does kind of like, uh, on the bit. I just want to encourage her to keep it, um, keep her mouth secured around the bit. Just a little, little offerance of obedience. Um, but it's definitely not being forced. This is very loose. I mean, I can stick my fingers through it like she's good. But she likes to chew on it. She says, I have race pony habits. <laughs> Another thing, um, this is a goto top with red sleeves and it's pretty dope um go to equestrian and i'm wearing like a carrots vest that i got forever ago and i have on a c4 belt <laughs> that is splatter paint and then i have on my fitz breeches um that i bought from tack of the day for mega cheap and they have like um some sticky full seat i love them but yeah this breastplate is from bridlesandreins.com as most of you know that's where my bridles and stuff are but this bridle is some random off-brand one that um, Honey, her owner, was using on her, and it's the only one that I found that we have. That fits her, right? So yeah, I'm gonna get her untacked and taken care of for the night. So I'm just gonna, just gonna go ahead and go. Eeps. That is a long tongue. Are you a giraffe? I think you might secretly be a giraffe because you really like to have your head up. You like to use these muscles and not any of that. <laughs> that's it for us so make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications if you want to be notified when i post new videos that's the thing you can click the little bell button comment what you want to see next and uh yeah thanks for watching bye decided to film a barn vlog to do you love for me yes 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 you're like a tire jack you just go up <laughs> I love you. What are you doing with your tongue? I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna poke it. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna stop. Boop. Oh, missed.